It's common on live events to have your main speakers up in the air and then your subs on the ground. We want to get our mains up so that everyone in our audience uh, can have a similar experience as many frequencies as possible, both the mids and highs. But due to either rigging constraints or logistics or budget or time, we often can't get subwoofers in the air. I personally like doing that because I can get them keeping up with the mains and have a similar spread of energy, but sometimes on the ground. So I picked this venue today, which has subs right here under my feet that are very close to the front row and very far from the back row. And I wanted to measure the actual discrepancy. Is it as rough as it looks like in prediction software? Because right here, this microphone at the very front is nine times closer than the one in the very back or vice versa. This, that microphone's nine times farther. So is it gonna be louder for this person in the front versus the back? So I thought, why not measure it? So I've got four microphones here today want the very front of this part, the back of this audience at front of house and the very back of the room. And we're gonna look at this data and then we'll analyze it a little bit and see how can we mitigate it. And if you're in a similar situation with your mains up high, subs on the ground and a very close audience, what we could do about it. Okay, so let's go over to front of house, look at the measurement setup and get started. So I've got my setup here at front of house. I'm running smart. I've got my four microphones in my interface and I'm running the output into my front of house console, which today is a CL3. Ideally, I go straight into the processor, but this is what I get into today. The main speaker we're gonna be looking at is right up here in the center. We got three distributed point sources. Those are Tanoi boxes. And we're gonna be measuring that to see what the mains level is. And then we'll be going down and looking at that center sub and seeing at that level front to back. And it's right under that downstage center lip. All right, so first thing we did uh, before we started filming here is verify all our microphones. So I put all four of them here at front of house and made sure they're at the same level. So that data looks like here and I can see all of them giving me the same level, same polarity, same phase data and they're right here with me at front of house. So I can trust that their data is accurate. So we're gonna hide this and start from scratch, got all my delay times zeroed out, and we're gonna see what the levels look like. But first, we're gonna do it with our main speaker to see as a reference, and then we'll mute our mains and kick on our subs and look at that data. So let me kick on our generator here, and we're gonna turn on our delay finder to track that. So I'm looking at this data here and I'm gonna to go to the top and look at my impulse response and see that it latched onto something. So I've got that here, that looks good. C is good. This right here is either a reflection or maybe one of the delay speakers up there. Go to B, um, it's a little noisy. Yeah, that's better. And then A, I see here I've got two spikes right here. So that means there's a timing discrepancy with that very front row with that main speaker. So that's just how the, the front fills were aligned. So I'm gonna back it up to the earlier one so we have a little bit better coherency and phase data. So all I did was manually adjust the delay time to get my phase trace to act similar to what the other ones are so they are in the same ballpark. All right, uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and capture this and we're gonna look at our levels front to back so we have a baseline to then compare to our sub levels front to back. So I made a folder mains front to back. I even got a little average here. And let's go ahead and look at this discrepancy front to back. So for our very front microphone, so we have in the top end here uh, looks like about a four or five dB spread until we get way up here in the high frequencies and it's tighter. Uh, so we are well within an acceptable tolerance of what this system is doing front to back in the mains. So ideally we'd have the same spread in the low frequencies and let's see if we get that. So I'll hide all this now, hit play, and now I'm gonna mute our main speakers or turn off or send to that. And now we're gonna kick on our subwoofers. They're on an aux with this setup. And we're gonna see what those levels look like. So we can see here in the front row on A, we have nice high coherence. So that's really good. That red line is high, so I mean we got good data. I wanna rattle through these other ones. Good coherence here. C falling a little bit. We have, again, this weird dip in the middle here. I think that's from 
uh, the sound bouncing off that upstage wall and then coming back with that cavity with the sub. And then D, we have that in the very back. Uh, coherence isn't amazing, but still, still pretty good. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit now, option two, we could see, yeah, right here above our sub range, our, our data gets pretty, uh, pretty rough. Um, again, with this being a reverberant room, multiple subs, all that thing, um, I can't expect world-class data, but we can still look at the levels in general and see what's going on. And this is also assuming that beforehand with the DSP, the, the subs were aligned to the mains as they, uh, who knows what alignment point they chose. We can maybe look at that with, with, with the integrator that put in this system. We don't have access to the DSP today, so we're just kind of working backward from there. So now I'm gonna capture this measurement. So subs, front to back. And let's look at this level discrepancy. I'll hide this so I have a little bit more room. And we can see here our, let's look at 63 hertz, so like right in the middle of our sub range. Uh, we'll go to 60. So this A trace is at 17 dB, right? And we're gonna go bring back our data bar here. And let's go to our yellow trace, which is at the very back. If I look at that, select it, and we go down, that's at 0 0.69. So there is an 18-ish dB difference, which is about what you'd expect in a system of this size. Because if we look at a nine and a half difference distance ratio, I think it's about 99 feet to the front row and 85 to the back. If we calculate that in regards to decibels in our offset, that's the amount in decibels that equates to that equation. So we're actually getting an accurate representation of what we thought was going to be over distance. But we can see the level change over frequency is not the same. So if we go down here at 40 hertz, and this is nice coherent data, we select this guy, same thing, coherent data, the low frequencies are tracking with each other. We have this similar dip here at 52 hertz. Again, I think that's from speaker boundary interference response, something fancy we can tackle a little bit later, but basically because of reflection off the back, we're getting a cancellation at the woofer, but we're having a nice hot level here at 70, and then it drops. So let's look at this microphone right here at front house, which is our magenta trace. And this is what the front house engineer is hearing. It's basically in the middle here. We still have a big dip here at 52 hertz. Uh, and then we have this at 8 dB at 70 hertz. Then we drop down and then look at this one, which is right back here uh, at the edge of our audience. And it's following a similar trace. So what can we conclude from this data? Is that yes, we are indeed seeing a big level front to back, a big difference, 18, 19 dB, but it's not equal over frequency. So it's not like this, you know, a subwoofer in half space or free field, it's gonna have a nice even response because it's in a cavity, it's affecting that. So I wish we didn't have that variable, but we're seeing the level drop over distance. We're not seeing it be equal over frequency. And so what can we do about that? So since we have a measurement here at front of house, we wanna mitigate the decisions that front of house is making for the entire room. So what I would advocate for is setting the levels so it's kind of in between uh, for the front house mix position. So let's go back and compare this to our mains trace. So if we got our subs, kick on our mains here. A lot of data here. Let's turn on some smoothing, make it a little bit easier to read. Let's go to one third octave. And now I'm actually gonna take a new measurement with both mains and subs on. I think that'd probably make it the easiest to read here. So I'll hit play on all these guys. Keep our same delay times. And I'll kick this on. So mains plus sub. And now we see the levels moving front to back in a more general scope at third octave. So we are seeing that, yes, the front row has a lot, but these three microphones here are actually tracking really similar to each other. Um, and I have them generally following this, the, the upper microphone getting to the top of this target trace. We could, of course, just adjust the sub level overall. But in this case, I would probably bring up the subs a little bit hotter so I had this front of house mix position just under that target trace and then the front row over, knowing that the rest of the room is gonna track a little bit closer to here. So the only 
folks, at least with this data, who are experiencing a dramatically different experience than the rest of the room are those who are at the very front. So basically the rate of change from front to back is slowing down the farther you move back in the room, which is the inverse square law at work. So all that being said, if you're setting sublevels, if they're at a differing rate of change than your mains, uh, don't make that decision in the front row or in the back row. Move in the middle of your audience. So if you're at front of house at the back, move towards the middle of your audience uh, and just move around the whole space in general because there's another sub on the side on each of the stage. Uh, those have a, a factor in what's going on. I know I'm just staying on axis today. But all that being said, uh, make sure to consider the whole space when thinking about level setting your subs. It's going to change over frequency in the space uh, and try to get an even response as possible when moving with your mains. Hopefully this is helpful for you today. My name is Michael Curtis. Hopefully, uh, getting, I love getting you good results on your shows and your sound systems. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.